When you look at progressives, those state theorists that come into uh, American politics after the Civil War, the progressive theorists, mm -hmm. what they are absolutely against is the social compact or the Constitution because it's a defense of individual rights. You've written a lot uh, about this uh, ugly modern phenomenon called by the ugly name of the administrative state. Uh, where does that term come from and, and what does it mean? The term, the administrative state, as, as, as just the use of administrative state, I think, I don't know the exact, uh, oops, who coined that phrase. I know Probably that, an administrator. Yeah, perhaps. I know it comes into to the literature of political science fairly late because when I first started writing on this phenomenon, I called the, the study the, of what I was focusing on the problem of, of the modern state. Mm -hmm. I called it administrative centralization, which is, which is what Tocqueville called the problem of despotism in modern time. But by the... So that's a term from the early 19th century. Right. Tocqueville. Tocqueville's term. Once the, 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 the concept of the state died out, probably uh, in the early part of the 20th century, the first writers of, in uh, political science talked about the state incessantly. Mm -hmm. But the progressive movement, of course, uh, once it succeeded in establishing itself in terms of liberalism, it, it didn't have to speak about the state really anymore. Uh, and even the political scientists didn't talk about the state. Is the term um, a synonym for bureaucracy or is it something different or larger than bureaucracy? Well, the term is uh, administrative state is now, I think, synonymous with bureaucracy, but the, the, the state itself is, is much more comprehensive. In fact, if you look at the, in its origins, the, theoretic, the theoreticians who talked about the state talked about it as a rational mm -hmm. state, which means that it's the rule of organized intelligence or knowledge. It means you have to develop or you have to cultivate the kind of knowledge that enables government to be able to solve our problems. So in principle, you could say that the modern state denies that any government, that there should be any limitation on the power of government mm. because the purpose of government is to solve our social, economic, political, any kind of human problem. But it, to solve those problems, you need human knowledge about those problems that is developed by the disciplines of the social So science. when we call that the state, or maybe the, now we call it the administrative state. Yeah. We're using state in, you might say, the German sense, right. der Staat, right. um, which is essentially unlimited government. Right. And, and just briefly contrast that to the traditional American understanding of government, or this, yeah. the state is not a term that we would use as, uh, as zealously as the Germans and, no, and modern Americans now use the state, but what's the contrast? Well, the, the contrast, of course, is in, in, in understanding the social compact or the Constitution, that was understood in a completely different way than the modern state because it, it creates a distinction, constitutionalism, between government and civil society, between church and state, which requires a limitation mm -hmm. on the power of government and a defense of the autonomy of civil society. In other words, a great part of human life will take place through contractual relations, not through compulsion or in through the, the force of right. government. In the private sphere in or the private in civil sphere. society, not right. under the thumb or the organized intelligence right. of the state. Yeah. And of course it presupposes that the compact, when you look at the social compact as, as the constitution in a way is a compact, it's a defense of the individual or the natural rights of, indiv of human beings. Mm -hmm. And the purpose then of government is to protect those rights. And the, and the exercise of those rights take place in civil society. And government ensures that those who participate are understood in terms of the principle of equality of citizenship. So you have equal equality and liberty as part of that compact, 
When you look at progressives, those state theorists that come into uh, American politics after the Civil War, the progressive theorists, mm -hmm. what they are absolutely against is the social compact or the Constitution because it's a defense of individual rights. And the state establishes a new ground of rights, and that's in, tor in terms of establishing rights as citizens that are granted by government. Mm -hmm. They're not a compact of people who have rights that precede government. That's right. So from the <clears throat> progressive point of view, there are no rights outside the state or right. against the right. state. You get your rights by means of membership, as it were. Within the in state. In the state, right. right. That's right. Whereas in the old <clears throat> understanding, the whole purpose of government is to protect mm -hmm. your rights, which you have right. as a mm -hmm. natural human being or as a, a god, uh, someone made in the image of God. And so the, the, the fundamental defense of the rights are established by the protection of property. Property both in person, but also in conscience, in speech, in, in the right to your own labor. The most comprehensive understanding of property, of course, is is the right to uh, all of the attributes that the individual has as a human being mm -hmm. are used on their own behalf uh, and they're protected uh, in the form of property. There's no kind of protection of property that apart from a, uh, uh, an understanding uh, of a public good, uh, of a common good or a public good defined by the state. Now I wouldn't define this as a common good in the way James Madison would. Mm -hmm. But let us say there's no absolute protection for property in the state. The state, in the idea of the state, you have to get beyond private property mm -hmm. protection. Another way, let's look at this another way. Um, we know from uh, um, Plato and Aristotle that every political society points to a certain human type and sort of culminates in a certain human type. Uh, monarchy and in, in the good monarch and uh, uh, aristocracy and the character mm -hmm. of an aristocrat. Um, what, what's the human type that dominates the administrative state? What is the human type that, that, that uh, the administrative state culminates in? Yeah, I, I would say from the point of view of, of those theorists who look to what it was that the state should protect, the human being that is protected is, let me, let, let, let's say, uh, a, a creature that, that is not known by nature. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, they're known by, by the possibilities of human creativity. Mm -hmm. And so rights are not understood in terms of the defense of, 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 of nature. But, there, but rights are understood in terms of, 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 of freedom of expression. Mm -hmm of what it is you, you let the be uh, uh, be authentic be yourself self creation self creation one of obama president obama's yeah. favorite terms actually yeah. yeah and in fact what the modern theory behind the administrative pre state presupposes is that we don't know what it means to be human mm -hmm. and that means that the problem of hu that human beings create themselves in time which means that we don't know the problem of identity becomes fundamental problem of modern historical man. Because if we don't know what it means to be human, we're constantly in, uh, establishing ourselves. We're recreating ourselves. We're conscious of the freedom that we have to recreate ourselves. In a way, that, that, uh, that sounds quite radical. In another way, it doesn't. Um, and so we need to, I think, uh, let's try to make a distinction. Uh, Americans are used to the idea of, you know, uh, recreating themselves in the sense of changing careers mm -hmm. or moving, sure. changing locations and, and ce ceasing to be a Californian and becoming a, a Texan. Um, how is that, how is that f familiar freedom uh, to redefine our life to a certain extent, how does that contrast to the, to the self-creation that you're talking about? Yeah, I mean, it, it, when human beings recreate the conditions of their lives, that's different than, cre than creating what is fundamental 
Uh, in other words, when you say uh, to, 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 to change your job is not the, the same as, say, changing your gender. Mm -hmm. I mean, that requires technology <laughs> and, and require. I mean, one can say then that one thinks that there are no natural limits, that human beings through science, technology, through creativity can, 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 can establish what it means to be human for them. See, the American founders would, would have understood that, to be, to, that it, it was not a problem to identify what a human being is because a human being was understood by their nature through faculties of nature, like human reason. <laughs> yes, yeah. uh, and that, the senses that, and so forth. And yeah. senses that, 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 that made that uh, uh, intelligible. But you're in a brave new world when you, when you open up the possibilities of, of recreating your society, recreating the self, recreating all of those, those uh, environmental forces that are possible of recreation, like transforming economy, transforming society, establishing grounds of identity in, in, in tangible historical categories like race or class. All of those become new possibilities and are, are, are developed and come to be institutionalized in ways that make it very difficult to understand what we have in common as individual human beings. No, that's well put. But how do we get from that um, exciting self-creation, that sort of um, Nietzschean um, self-invention to bureaucracy? The boring, well, gray yeah. well, let us, rule let it, of yeah. bureaucrats. Let, let's put it this way. In order for you to be free, you quote this frequently, as Roosevelt said, necessitous men cannot be free. Right. First of all, you have to give people everything they need before they'll even begin to be, to be able to think about the possibilities uh -huh. of transforming yourself so radically. that. Uh, but in the absence of that, what it really means is you have to get beyond necessity, both material, but also natural, natural. necessity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, of And how course, do you do that? Well, material necessity, you need a bureaucracy, you need a welfare state, you need an anti-state. So ev everyone's necessities have to be taken care right. of, even if they, were, they, don't, they don't themselves want to take care of them, or right. exert, Somebody the, will take exert care the effort of them. to take care of them, Somebody will someone take care will of take them. care of them. Yeah. And, and then you're, you're free to, I, I saw a congresswoman from, I think it was Michigan, and, and there was a debate about uh, cutting entitlements for certain people, and, and she was saying, she was very indignant about saying the, uh, that you can't in, cut entitlements to people uh, who say, don't want to, uh, to get up in the morning and go to work. There are some people that don't like to get up and go to work. We should be able, we sh they should have that choice. <laughs> right. This uh, is what, if you remember in, uh, in John Rawls's uh, Theory of Justice, he, he speaks about the person who spends his day counting blades of grass. <laughs> and he has the same right, you know, and the same needs, and therefore yeah. must be, his provisions must be provided yeah. um, for him by government if he's too busy counting blades of grass yeah. to go to work. But I think in the Lockean or the American tradition, necessity is a great spur to achievement. Mm -hmm. So they were of the opinion that necessity was a good uh, it, 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 because they thought that, that, that necessity... Or certainly could be a good. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, and it certainly does, and you can see that the people who do are driven by what, what, what there's, there's, there's tremendous achievement uh, that is spurred by, by necessity. When you get to the natural, getting beyond natural necessity, there I think you have to have a, developed a high level of, of science and, and engineering mm -hmm. that makes certain things possible. So that. one, so getting beyond necessity means, first of all, as you were saying, getting beyond material yeah, necessity. necessity, and that's where the welfare state uh, yeah. comes in, broadly speaking. And then, but there's something sexier than that, beyond that, right? Yeah. Well, I think the intellectuals are always the ones who, in their time, try to establish what passes as the latest kind of consciousness that we have, of what mm -hmm. freedom can be. And so it always has to be, in some ways, more radical. Because, uh, and, and so insofar as the intellectuals are, are, are going to lead, and, uh, they have to be the most outrageous. And, uh, and, and so... Transgressive. 
as right. we say these yeah. days. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think once you establish consciousness of freedom as the ground of establishing how we know what it means to be human, it's un it's it's open ended. It's unlimited. And depending upon how, how you transform your society, how you recreate it in each epoch, you open up new possibilities each time. And, and of course, the problem of politics then is how do you prevent those, those reactionaries yes. that are trying to keep us from moving forward? And, and, and so you have the, the, the real fundamental distinction in politics is between progressives and, rea and, and reactionaries. 